imagine you're hanging out somewhere in the forests of Australia. You're thirsty, so you go to the nearest stream. Suddenly, you feel that you have a runny nose. It's strange because you're perfectly healthy. You stop and wait. A few seconds pass, your nose is itching. A few minutes pass, your eyes are watering, your throat is going crazy, you can't breathe freely, and you're constantly sneezing. It seems you're breathing poisoned air. But what's poisoning it? The smallest particles of the most dangerous plant in the world are flying around you. It's called Gimpy Gimpy. There it is. It looks ordinary. A small bush with green stems and leaves. The closer you come, the worse you're feeling. You need more air, and your skin is turning red. It physically hurts you to be here. You may lose consciousness if you stay here for a little bit more. Do you know what will happen if you touch this plant? Well, it will feel like red-hot needles penetrating your skin. And even if you run away as far as possible from here right now, the pain will not subside. The effects of the sting will last for several hours. Days will pass, and the pain will remain. Weeks and months will pass, but you'll still feel it. You can wash the touch area with cold water and soap, but this won't help a lot. It might not go away for several years. And all those tiny plant hairs that penetrated your skin can stay with you forever. The toxicity of Gimpy Gimpy is so high that even if you tear off one leaf and touch it after a year, it will still cause damage to your body. The bad news is that this plant is hard to spot. You can easily confuse it with burdock or nettle. Just imagine what will happen if someone falls into the bush. Its distinctive feature is a thin layer of fluff on each leaf. But be careful. This fluff consists of thousands of poisonous hairs. They also fly around the plant, so it's dangerous to be here without a gas mask. An ordinary medical mask won't help here, since the hairs can get through the fabric. The good news is, there aren't many of them around the world, and people usually put warning signs near them. This bad guy grows in Australia. Gold miners discovered this plant in 1860, near the town of Gympie. And something is telling me it wasn't the happiest discovery. Even now, Gimpy Gimpy poses a serious danger to loggers and tourists. You may accidentally touch it with your hand. One touch is enough to make you lose your working capacity for several weeks. In some cases, the affected area continues to hurt for decades. One man fell into the bush and lost his mind because of the pain. People compare a Gimpy Gimpy sting with a bite of 30 wasps at the same time. And you won't know how to get rid of it. One guy experienced an unpleasant feeling every time he took a shower for two years after touching this plant. If you want to study it, you need to wear a protective suit and a gas mask. There should be no open areas on your body. Tuck your pant legs into your boots, put on protective gloves, and move out into the forest. It grows on the edge, next to streams. Gimpy Gimpy is one of the six species of poisonous trees native to Australia. They love the sun and the vegetation around them. Every hair on the surface of the leaf is poisoned. When it contacts any surface, it opens and sprays a burning toxin. Then, the pain increases and the skin turns red. The duration of the effect depends on the number of hairs that penetrate your body. After a few years, you can put pressure on the bite site and feel the hairs are still there. There's no antidote because scientists still don't know what the toxic poison's components are. All they know is that the poison effect lasts a very long time, several years. It can withstand cold and hot temperatures. Water only enhances its effect. Botanical samples of this plant in laboratories are still dangerous, despite scientists keeping them for several years. After you have passed by Gimpy Gimpy, don't forget to disinfect yourself. Carefully remove clothes, shoes, masks, and glasses. Put a protective suit in the washing machine and wash everything else well. Tiny hairs can be in your pants or the sleeves of your jacket, so be careful. This toxicity makes Gimpy Gimpy the most protected plant in the world. But wait, what's that? Do you see these little holes on its leaves? It seems that someone is eating it. These are the usual nocturnal beetle species. They can devour Gimpy Gimpy all day long, as the poisonous hairs can't harm them. These bugs just don't care. Gimpy Gimpy is the perfect lunch, as no one can disturb these beetles while they're sitting on this plant. 
And yes, all the animals living nearby know that it's better not to get close to it. But there's one mammal that is not afraid of Gimpy Gimpy. It's a red-legged patamelon. It looks like a little kangaroo and loves to eat the Gimpy Gimpy leaves. Scientists still don't know what exactly protects this animal from toxic hairs. We know almost all the places where this plant grows. People mark them with signs. If you see one, just don't go there. Gimpy Gimpy is a terrible plant, but how about a plant that can take over the whole world and destroy all the crops? It doesn't need favorable conditions for growth. It can survive in the rain, in arid places under the scorching sun, at low and high temperatures. It's called the giant hogweed. If the seed of this plant gets into a vegetable bed or a wheat field, the plant will displace all competitors in a few weeks. The wind can blow on the giant hogweed seeds and spread them further to the nearest territories. This plant can worsen ecosystems around the world. It grows faster than people manage to destroy it. If you spray poison on the leaves, it doesn't even care. If you let parasitic beetles into giant hogweed territory, it doesn't care either. It multiplies very fast and lives longer than many plants. The giant hogweed can reach the height of a one-story huh? house and go deep underground with its roots. It's also dangerous to touch it with your hands. It can turn your skin red, and it won't feel good to say the least. That's how it's making it so hard to fight against it. This poison destroys any plants, bushes, and flowers nearby. Scientists still can't create an effective poison to combat this green monster. No beetles feed on it. That's why the giant hogweed is one of the most dangerous plants in the world. It simply has no enemies in nature. But scientists are sure that evolution will create some creatures capable of destroying the giant hogweed. It can be small bugs or parasitic bacteria. But until that happens, people have to fight this beast on their own. They spend millions of dollars trying to destroy the plant, but it doesn't always work out. You can burn a field, but if one seed remains, it will quickly grow on the scorched ground. You've seen some of the most dangerous plants in the world, but what about trees? A manchineel tree grows in Florida. Its trunk secretes toxic juice that's dangerous for your skin, but it gets much worse during the rain. When water falls on the bark, it mixes with the poison. Then, these poison drops can bounce off the tree and get on your skin. Leaves and fruits also have this toxin, so never hide under this tree in bad weather. Mushrooms, shrubs, and flowers don't grow near this tree either. Animals never come close to it. Birds never sit on its branches. Manchineel trees are resistant to water and high temperatures. Never try to burn it. The smoke released during combustion is toxic and dangerous to your eyes. The locals mark this tree with red circles. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. The King Cobra, Black Widow, Giant Hornet, Scorpion, and the Horsefly. They can all bite, sting, and inject venom into your body. It usually hurts. You experience burning sensations. Your body might react unpredictably. But if you hurry, doctors will help you. The bite site will hurt for a few days, but then you'll forget about it. But what if you get a sting that you can never forget? Caused by a plant that looks absolutely unremarkable. You may not even notice touching it, but your body will react immediately. Just being near this plant can cause choking and coughing. Your eyes will start watering. But if you accidentally touch it, well, the pain will last for several days, weeks, months, or several years. Even after a long time, this unpleasant feeling can return at unexpected moments. You'll remember coming across this plant for the rest of your life, that's for sure. And this is not a cactus with sharp needles I'm talking about. Neither is it poison ivy. At first glance, this is an ordinary green bush with broad leaves. The good news is that this plant only grows in particular areas in Australia. It's called the Gimpy Gimpy. Gold miners discovered it in 1860 near the town of Gimpy. And most likely, it was an unpleasant find. Before you go to the forest to search for this plant, you need to put on a protective mask. And you'd better opt for a gas mask or respirator. 
thick clothes and sturdy boots. Tuck your pant legs inside your boots, wear protective gloves, and you're all set. You don't have to go far into the wild. This plant grows on the edge of the forest, next to streams. You pass by some trees and come closer to the water. Here, in a dense thicket, you notice this dangerous bush. It can grow up to 10 feet tall. And its dark green heart-shaped leaves with jagged edges can grow up to a foot and a half wide. This plant can easily be confused with nettle or burdock. The only thing that can help identify Gimpy Gimpy is a thin layer of fluff covering its leaves. It's like it's encouraging you to stroke it. But don't fall into this trap. This is not fluff. It's tiny toxic hairs. They're not only on the leaves, but also fly around the plant. If you remove your gas mask, you'll feel as if ground pepper has got into your nose. You'll have an uncontrollable sneezing fit. Your nose will itch. It'll become difficult to breathe. Your tongue will swell. Your eyes will feel as if they're on fire. And if you stay there for some time, this plant will seriously damage your health. For many years, the Gimpy Gimpy caused huge problems to loggers and hunters. Even when they knew about its existence, they often accidentally touched it while working. This was enough to make people sick for several weeks. There were cases where sting sites hurt for decades. One man said he felt pain for two years after touching the plant. He experienced extremely unpleasant sensations every time he took a cold shower. People compare this feeling to the sting of 30 wasps simultaneously. And the worst thing is that doctors can hardly help in this situation. Even an old dried leaf lying on the ground presents a serious danger. You can drop your phone or glove, try to pick it up, and accidentally touch the gimpy gimpy leaf. To study it, you need to use a pair of tweezers to take a leaf and put it in a vacuum sealed container. Done! Now you can transport your sample to the laboratory and reveal its secrets. The Gimpy Gimpy is one of the six species of stinging trees native to Australia. It grows in the sun, surrounded by other plants. And, most surprisingly, there are holes in its leaves. But before we find out what creatures feed on one of the most dangerous plants in the world, let's study its poison. The bush is covered with tiny hairs, and even one of these hairs can cause big problems. It's so thin and small that it can penetrate your skin and stay there for several months or even years. Water doesn't wash it out. It only enhances the effect of the poison. A tip of the hair opens up when it comes into contact with some surface. Then it injects a potent toxin. After that, you feel a burning sensation. Half an hour later, the feeling gets worse. Your skin starts pulsating and turns red. You never know how long the effect is going to last. It all depends on the number of hairs you've come into contact with. But what precisely is this toxin? How can it cause so many problems? Scientists still don't know for sure. They can't say which components of the poison cause the burning. The effect of the toxin lasts for a long time. High or cold temperatures don't stop it. After a few years, you can put pressure on the affected spot and feel that the poisonous hairs are still there. Pluck one leaf and throw it on the ground. Then come back a hundred years later and touch this leaf. You'll feel the unpleasant sting again. The botanical samples of the Gimpy Gimpy still remain dangerous in many laboratories. With such toxic leaves, Gimpy Gimpy may be the most protected plant in the world. But some creatures still feed on its poisonous leaves. And one of these creatures is a species of ordinary nocturnal beetles. They can eat Gimpy Gimpy nonstop, and they don't care about its poisonous hairs at all. The toxin just doesn't affect these insects. This is the perfect meal for them, because no animal will dare to attack the bugs sitting on the Gimpy Gimpy. Except for the red-legged patamelon, who lives in the forests of Australia. It looks like a mini kangaroo. This cute animal also feeds on the poisonous plant. And no one knows how the patamelon protects itself from the toxins. But unlike these fearless creatures, 
People have to install warning signs around these dangerous territories and wear special clothing and masks not to get harmed by the plant. And those who have come close to the Gimpy Gimpy have to wash their clothes right afterward. Poisonous hairs are likely to remain on their pants and jackets. So you've seen one of the most poisonous plants in the world. But what about the most poisonous tree? We leave Australia and move to Florida. Imagine you're somewhere in a tropical forest near the Caribbean coast. It starts raining, and you decide to hide under a tree. Of course, this is already a bad idea, since lightning can strike the tree. But you should worry about something different this time. The tree seems ordinary. A great trunk, green leaves, and fruits similar to small apples. You stand next to it for a few seconds and feel your skin starting to burn. It feels as if drops of acid are falling from the sky. But no, it's still rainwater. But when a drop touches the surface of the tree, it gets filled with poison. Next, it bounces off the trunk, hits your skin, and causes the burning sensation. Never stand near a mansion eel tree. And don't pluck its leaves and fruit either. The trunk, bark, branches, and fruit contain toxic juice. Even if the weather is warm and sunny, don't come close. The tree bark secretes toxins too. You may notice there's almost nothing growing around the tree. Mushrooms, shrubs, flowers, and other trees can't exist nearby. Animals also avoid this place. The poison produced by the manchineal tree is resistant to water and fire. That's why burning tree branches is also a bad idea. The smoke is very dangerous, especially for your eyes. Locals know this tree well, but tourists can easily get hurt. That's why people mark manchineal trees with paint as a warning. The Gimpy Gimpy and manchineal trees are scary plants, but the giant hogweed can be considered the king among toxic plants. Yeah, touching it can cause a severe allergic reaction, burning sensations, and whatnot. But the worst thing is that the giant hogweed is one of the fastest growing weeds in the world. Its seeds don't need long to develop and take over any territory. It quickly became one of the main invasive plant species in the world. The hogweed can affect entire ecosystems. The plant grows faster than others, displacing its competitors from their territories by harming them with poison. People spend a lot of money to fight this parasitic plant. If its seeds get into your garden, they'll occupy it in no time and it'll be pretty challenging to get rid of them. These huge plants were initially considered exotic. People used to buy and grow them to decorate their gardens. But then, hogweed seeds managed to escape, and a real invasion began. The plant can spray its seeds over a vast area when you cut it, and the wind can carry them even further away to neighboring territories. Scientists still haven't come up with an easy and cheap way to deal with this weed. You check under the sofa. Nope. You open the cupboard. Not there. You lie down on the floor and sneak a peek under your bed. Nah, no kitties there, just dust bunnies. Then where is your cat? Oh no, could that crazy pet slip out through the back door? A wave of panic overwhelmed you, and you bolt outside. Your backyard, once green and blooming, is now covered with a thick layer of rock-hard asphalt. Several large fake plants in pots make the dull landscape somewhat more upbeat. Anyway, where's that pussycat of yours? Oh no, just as you feared, your kitty spotted something on the ground and is now playing with it. You get closer. Incredible! A tiny green sprout has broken through the asphalt. But it means your cat is in grave danger. Because these days, plants are more treacherous than bears, crocodiles, or even sharks. Until a couple of years ago, most people knew next to nothing about carnivorous plants. If you had asked an expert, though, they would have excitedly submerged you in a sea of information. Meat-eating plants used to munch on tiny creatures, mostly insects, frogs, more rarely a mouse or rat. That is, until recently. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Back when days were good, there were just about 700 kinds of carnivorous plants on the planet. They grew all over the world, except Antarctica, 
Nobody likes Antarctica except penguins. Even before the disaster, people kept discovering new species of meat-eating plants. Some of them were in the process of becoming carnivorous. Those had their leaves coated with wax. A bug landed on it and slipped right into the plant's water-filled pitcher. Some carnivorous plants wooed insects not only to snack on them. Some flying critters were needed to spread the plant's pollen. That's one of the reasons meat-eating plants had, and still have, bright, colorful flowers. These blooms were high above the treacherous leaves, as far away from the traps as possible. This way, pollinators didn't get eaten before they helped the plant to reproduce. Good old plants got most of their food by basking in the sun. But it wasn't enough. They also needed nutrients, which they slurped up with their roots. But carnivorous plants lived in areas with nutrient-poor soil. That's why they started to catch prey. Such a high-protein diet helped them survive and grow faster. Some meat-eating plants didn't even have special digestive enzymes. They used to partner up with good bacteria. And while those bacteria took care of prey, the plant itself concentrated on making its physical trap stronger. Little did we know at that time that soon, life would change beyond recognition, that we would need all the available information about the planet's flora. Because when a scientific experiment went way out of control, all plants on Earth, and I do mean all, became carnivorous. The event even got the name of the Great Carnivorous Disaster. Slowly but surely, grass, trees, and bushes started to transform. Not all of them grew bigger, but some did. Plus, each plant species picked its own way to catch its prey. You cautiously come closer to the spot where your cat keeps playing with an innocent-looking tree sprout. Even though you know the plant is still weak and isn't likely to harm your pet, the sight makes you shudder. You have to figure out which kind of plant it is. Green meat-eaters use a bunch of different methods to catch their prey. Those are pit-shaped and snap traps sticky goo, flypaper traps, and many others. Still, all of them involve modified leaves. The plant you're currently looking at uses sticky tentacles to get its food. If these tentacles were motionless, sunlight would glint off them, attracting insects. But this plant is a proud owner of moving tentacles. And right now, you watch them wrap around your kitty's tail. You put on a glove you now always keep in your back pocket. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Then you gently and carefully pry the surprisingly strong tentacle open. The plant doesn't seem to be poisonous, but still. You can't but feel relieved it's not a snap trap one. Those take after the iconic meat-eater Venus flytrap. Their leaves are divided in half. On the ends, they have spikes that create a seal. Once an insect, or these days, an animal makes its way in between the serrated leaves, they snap shut. The whole process takes less than a second. This is the most treacherous kind of carnivorous plants. Snaptrap plants have leaves covered with short, stiff hairs. They're called sensitive or trigger hairs. If something, or someone, touches them, the trap springs into action. The plant produces digestive juices, similar to those in your stomach. In 5 to 12 days, there's almost nothing left from the prey. The trap reopens, and the scarce remains get washed away by rain. These days, people can't feel safe even underwater. Now, all seaweed, every single blade of grass, can't wait to munch on your finger. Life has dramatically changed in many ways. The construction of new roads and highways that were supposed to go through forests need much more preparation, safety measures, and more advanced tools. On the plus side, the planet has more oxygen than ever before. People have started to adjust their lifestyles to the new reality. We no more jog in the park, cycle, swim in open water, and enjoy other outdoor activities. Gyms, swimming pools, and takeout restaurants have become super popular. The great carnivorous disaster has changed people's diets. Growing good old veggies isn't an easy feat these days. Potatoes, carrots, broccoli, you name it, have become a rare delicacy. People don't walk anymore. You never know which tree or bush on your way might attack you because you look delicious enough to lunch on. 
That's why there's an ever-increasing demand for cars. All flower shops have gone out of business. The lovely floral arrangements had a nasty habit of eating the customers. Weddings certainly changed. The simple custom of throwing the bride's bouquet to the bridesmaids changed to imply an attempt on someone's life. Unfortunately, many animals have gone extinct, mostly the slower ones. Those animals that have survived the disaster are either evolving to live alongside carnivorous plants or skedaddling to safer areas. Lots of animals that used to live in the wild are now moving closer to towns and cities. By the way, the safest and most popular places to settle down nowadays are deserts. Despite a lack of water in supermarkets, more and more people build houses and relocate there. And people who opt for living in a desert don't mind walking around a cactus or two on their way to the car. Even though some of these cacti have learned to detect prey and shoot at it with their needles. It's still unclear how they get to the falling prey afterward. They can't crawl, can they? There are still original meat-eating plants here, but they've evolved to be much stronger and larger. In any case, people are still learning to live in this new world of meat-eating plants. Boy, what I wouldn't give for a really good herbicide right now. <laughs>